Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake, and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Most of us know this passage so well. It's easy for it to run over us without it permeating our minds, our hearts and our very being. When we remind ourselves whom the church has portrayed Jesus Christ over the centuries, we may find this passage to be full of surprises. Son of God, in him all things were created, Messiah, feeder of five thousand from two loaves and five fish, walks on water, raises the dead, worthy to receive glory and honour and power. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. These are the things the church has taught about Jesus over the years. Surprises fourfold. Firstly, in verse 38, Jesus was grieved and agitated. He was personally anxious about his own future. Secondly, in verse 36, it is possible that what Jesus truly wanted could differ from his father's will. Thirdly, verses 40, 43 and 45, Peter, James and John were sleeping, not praying as Jesus requested. These who were to become the heartbeat of the young church badly let Jesus down. Fourthly, in verses 45 and 46, Jesus' desire, his prayer, is not answered in the way that he wanted. God did answer his prayer, but not in the way that he desired. Jesus came to accept that God's way for him was best for himself and for the good of the whole of humankind. Above all, it demonstrated that God's love was at the heart of the cross. Yes, it demonstrated God's love for the whole of humankind, but it was the love of God that somehow held Jesus, even as he suffered all the contingency, confusion and mortality of being human, in which he was enveloped. Jesus shared our flesh and our blood. He's like a brother to us all. Jesus was tested Jesus suffered and Jesus died. He is able to sympathise with all of our weaknesses. The great paradox, the greatest mystery of life, is that it is only through death that Jesus was able to destroy the power of death. The perfect love of Jesus casts out all our fears. The courageous and practical response of Jesus to accepting his father's answer to his prayer were his words in verse 46. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that you are our brother and our friend. Because you lived a fully human life, you shared the experience of our uncertainty, suffering and death. We thank you for your love for us in taking on the human mantle. 
We thank you that there is nothing in all creation that will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Be with us today, we pray, as we journey with you on the cross. Deepen our understanding of your passion. Assure us of the depth of your love for each one of us and help us to live each day for you with courage and practical concern for those whom we meet. Amen. <laughs>